Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to start our new project and the first thing we need to do is obviously once we've created our game, so if you haven't done that already I will wait for you to do that, so if you go ahead and pause this video go ahead and create your project. The screen resolution and all that sort of thing don't really matter but you, you create the game that you want to create. So now that you've done that, I hope, <laughs> what we're going to do is the first thing is a little bit of cleaning up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our scripts.rpy and we're going to get rid of pretty much all of this content here and all of this content here. We just don't need it. It's unnecessary. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just create our game loop. We're not actually going to use the game loop yet because we don't have any code to put in it, but we might as well start as we mean to go on. So we're going to create a new variable called uh, playing. So it's like dollar playing equals true. And we're going to type file. And that's all the typos playing. And then that's our game loop created. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to uh, call uh, init variables. Which is a method or a, uh, a label that we haven't yet created, but Essentially, we're going to use this to create all of our variables. So what we can actually do is inside the game folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this scripts. And then inside that folder, I'm going to create another folder. And I'm going to call this one like core. And inside that, we're going to create a file. And we're just going to call this one uh, variable defines dot rpy cool and then what we can actually do is just type in label and copy this place that there and then just type in return for now that's fine that's all we need to do and that will cover us for those and what we can also do inside this file is if we drop that down a bit there we can actually put in our defaults and define statements. So for example, if we wanted to type in the name of a character, we could type in define and C equals character. And then you can have all of the characters information within this set of brackets. So you can have the character's name, which is, I don't know, let's call it a Christine. And then that's that how that works and then because rempy the way rempy works any of the define or default statements which are not inside label will just run at initialization of the game which is precisely what we needed to do all right so we've got the bare bones of this sorted we can just type in um any old stuff here just type in uh, c hi and then that just prevents this from um becoming problem because obviously it will just see an infinite loop in fact even better option is we can just type in menu oops sorry silly me menu there type in menu correctly spell it correctly and then we can just type in there and move that to there and then we can just give our options as hi pass and then buy and we can set in this one playing equals false and then that just gives us a get out clause for the game loop for now so that it stops it from being in a infinite loop so theoretically this code should run but we're not anywhere near that stage yet don't get overly excited so we go into the screens.rpy and we can see this is where all of our game screens currently exist so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to remove the screens that we're not going to use so for example input screen well we might use that choice screen is definitely going to be in the game quick menu screen don't care about the quick menu at all so i'm just going to delete it i don't have the quick menu in the games if you really wanted to keep it you can just delete the parts of it you don't like so let's say you wanted to keep quick load and quick save then you could do that for me though I'm just going to delete it main game and save screens navigation so this is the menu that appears in the navigation or of, of any screen so if you're in the main menu it will show you the navigation relevant to the main menu so we can remove some things from there we don't need a history we also don't need 
preferences. We don't need anything to do with replay. We don't need our about screen. And we're not creating this for uh, any other platform other than PC. So we can just delete those statements there and we can delete that text there like that. And then if we are in, not in the main menu, main menu and quit will become options in the menu. If it is the main menu, it will show you the start new game. Otherwise it will show you save and load. Uh, load will always be there regardless of what menu you're in. So we've cleaned that up. Main menu screen is more about formatting. As you can see, we could remove the um, titles and stuff if we wanted to. Don't really need to worry about that right now. And then the game menu screen, a load of other stuff in there. We're just not going to worry about that. I'm just going to keep skipping along the about screen that we do not use. So we can just remove that. Get rid of that. And this is really just about housekeeping and getting rid of unnecessary code. Save and load screens we do need. So let's get past those preferences. We don't really care about. There's so few options in the preferences anyway that it just it's a waste of code. All of that stuff. Slider label. So we can get rid of all of this stuff. Probably want to keep some of the slider stuff. No, actually, do you know what? We don't need a history screen. We can get rid of, get rid of anything. Any styles related to the history screen. Help screen also don't need. We can get rid of all of that. Mouse help don't need that. Gamepad help don't need that. Get rid of all this help stuff. Additional screens. Confirm screen will keep. So we get rid of all of that junk and you can already see how much smaller this file has become. The confirmed screen is the screen that comes up when you want to quit the game and it asks you if you're sure you want to do that. We don't have a skip function, but I'm going to leave it in there anyway because there is a keyboard shortcut. So you do want to keep it. Notify screen, don't really use, but I'm going to leave it in there anyway. NVL is the same, but you can delete these items if you don't want them, it's fine. Mobile variants we don't care about because this game is not going to be mobile phone compatible, so delete. Hold down control hit S, save that. So that's the screens.rpy file cleaned up. We can remove that now. Next thing we want to do is if we want to go into our options, you can check you know values in here. So you've got your config version. Um this will eventually be version 1.0, but you know, if you're releasing a game in drips and drabs to try and milk a Patreon crowd, then um, you're probably going to want to put 0 0.0001 or whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's up to you what you do there. I'm not going to tell you what ought to do or not, what not to do. Okay, so we've got all of these options we can play around with. I tend to tweak these as I'm going along, so there's not a great deal of work to do here. And it's the same with the GUI. The only thing you really want to check is that your screen resolution is what you want it to be and that you're happy with some of your colors. But again, you probably want to tweak these as you go along rather than trying to change them all at the very start. Because as you go through the development process, you might change your mind about a specific font or a font size or something like that. So realistically, you want to just leave this as is for now and then come back to it when you need to so in our core folder the next thing we want to create once we've closed this one down is we want to create our classes file so we're going to right click on core we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this classes.rpy cool beans and then we can do our init python block like that you could have this set up as something that um, starts before everything else, but I tend to just put it in an init Python block and everything else can sort its own lives out. You know, it's um, it's up to you how you do that. So what I want to do in here is the first thing I want to do is say persistent dot clear and then config dot use underscore pickle C pickle. Sorry, use C pickle. 
equals true and that just changes the what well, that removes all of the persistent data so when you start the game file up it will clear all the persistent data and start again and then this is just how the save file pickles the data what kind of data it stores now if i have sound in my game which i usually do anyone who's played any of my games usually notices there's some background music so i'm going to say rempi.music dot register underscore channel and I'm going to create a couple of channels so I'm going to create channel one and it's going to be in the mixer in the music mixer loop equals none stop on mute equals true uh, file underscore prefix equals uh, let's see nothing on that one for now and then buffer underscore equals true and then I'm just going to control C control V no that's not right it's control Z or V there we go and then we can just do the same but changing this one so channel 2 is going to be sound the sound channel and then we're going to set preferences dot set underscore volume and we're going to change the values here so we're going to set the value of the sound channel to 0 0.5 and we're going to do just oh no 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 control z Control C, Control V, Control V. There we go. It's early in the morning. What can I say? So we're not going to do that for the music channel. And this one we're going to set to 0.2 because we want our background music to be quiet. It's going to be in the background. It's not going to be the defining feature of the game. You know, it's just something to break the monotony a little bit. So we're going to Control S that and we're going to save that one. So that's the cleaning up and that's like the really, really sort of initial bits and pieces done. In the next video, we can start creating some of our game classes. Thanks ever so much for watching this, guys. Hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right. Bye bye.